Labyrinth Duels. This spin-off style of dueling took place over three episodes during Duelist Kingdom. It was a unique take on the Yu-Gi-Oh game, and it would ultimately influence what would become Dungeon Dice Monsters sometime later. In fact, when the Yu-Gi-Oh Duelist Volume 4 manga released, inside you could find yourself the official rules, field, and cards to this game. However, that version of Labyrinth Duels is very watered down compared to its anime counterpart. And so, I thought, let's go through all the rules of the anime, shall we? Yeah, sounds like fun. Let's go. A Labyrinth Duel is an altered type of duel that can occur when two criteria are met. One, the duel must be conducted on a labyrinth field. Two, the monster Labyrinth Wall must be summoned to the field. If these two criteria are met, then the duel will be converted into a Labyrinth Duel. When Labyrinth Wall is summoned, the field is transformed into a 9x9 grid. A random assortment of walls will then spawn, forming a maze. A Labyrinth Duel can only be conducted with four players. That's not a guaranteed rule in, however, Para and Dox, the people that Yugi and Joey were facing, they liked to duel in pairs. It was advantageous for them to duel in pairs as well. They had complementing cards for each other. So in the anime, it does seem like more of a preference rather than a necessity. So if you want to 1v1 someone, I think that's fine. Each player has 2,000 life points. If any player loses all their life points, then his team loses. Para and Dox both focused on Joey because they believed he was the weaker of the duelists and they knew if they could just eliminate him, both of them would lose. You win a labyrinth duel either by reducing one of your opponent's life points to zero, decking them out, or if the challenger can make it through the maze and exit out of the correct door. Basically, after you get through the labyrinth, there are two doors presented to you. One of these doors will lead to Maximilian Pegasus' castle, whereas the other one I think will lead you in like an infinite maze kind of thing. You'll be trapped in the labyrinth forever. So the question then becomes, which is the correct door? Well, fun fact, uh, neither of them. Whatever door Yugi and Joey would have chose would have been the wrong one. However, Yugi is able to bypass this unwinnable question. He does this by tricking the Paradox Brothers into revealing the truth with a rigged coin. Teammates can use each other's cards during their turn. However, they can't move each other's monsters. A Labyrinth Duel is still a duel, and as such, it still obeys the Duelist Kingdom rules. As we established before in the True Rules of Duelist Kingdom video, Duel Monsters is in a collaboration with Dungeons & Dragons here, so a lot of the aspects of that are combined with the rules of Dungeons & Dragons. What I mean by that is, if you can explain something, if it makes rational sense, most likely you can do it. I imagine you want some examples. My opponent just attacked with a water-based attack. That would mean that the ground is now wet. So my lightning-based attack can travel across the conductive wet floor. Or how about fusing the shadow ghoul with labyrinth wall? Well, this would mean that my monster is now a part of the walls. And so if we think about it, technically my monster now doesn't move along the floor. And so based on that logic, this means it can move an unlimited amount of spaces since it is moving along the walls and not the floor. You see what I mean? It seems like cheating, but you kind of get where they're coming from kind of thing. Or how about worms? Worms travel underground, right? So Dungeon Worm can tunnel under the labyrinth walls to attack monsters from below. This will also keep it safe from harm. That is, unless you can smoke it out with some fire. You get the gist, right? If you can explain it, it's fine. So let's move on. Each player is limited to five monsters and five spell and traps maximum at a time. Even though the playable field has gotten bigger, you still only have your five monster zones and your five spell and trap zones. So you need to obey that for your players. A monster summoned by a player is summoned at the start of the labyrinth in the open zone. This space outside the labyrinth exists on both teams' side of the field. The purpose of this zone is one, to keep monsters safe from the horrors that are in the labyrinth. So if you want to keep your monsters there, you absolutely can. It is also used so monsters can remain there if they are unable to move into the maze for any reason at all. And we'll get to what monsters aren't allowed in the maze in just a second. Each monster can move once per turn. Monsters can move up to one space for every level they have. 
For example, Fever Warrior, a level 4 monster, can move anywhere between 1 spaces and 4 spaces. Whereas Dark Magician, a level 7 monster, can move between 1 and 7 spaces. The more powerful a monster, the more amount of spaces it can move. A player may move monsters over their own monsters, but they may not move their monsters over an opponent's. Also to clarify, you can't move your teammates' monsters. You can move your monsters into a space occupied by one of your teammates' monsters though, if you need that for any reason. After moving a monster, the monster is placed in either attack or defense position. When your monster moves within one square of an opponent's monster whilst in the attack position, then they may battle. The battle and life point damage is conducted like you would in a regular duel. I'd like to mention that in the real world labyrinth duels that were established, there's two additional rulings to battle in. And while these rules don't apply to the anime labyrinth duels, I think it's worth mentioning them. If two or more of your attack mode cards occupy the same space and they attack an opponent's card, the player may attack the opponent's card with more than one of these monsters at once. If this is the case, the monsters attack together. You add all the monsters attacks together for the attack value. Theoretically, when Yugi and Joey had Celtic Guardian, Flame Swordsman, and the Axe Raider all on the same spot, if the Labyrinth Tank would have made it to them to attack, then together these three monsters would have had a combined attack of 5,400. And so, in that situation, they would have won the battle. It's worth noting that the reason we know this rule isn't implemented in the anime is because in the anime, Yugi summons his Dark Magician in front of these monsters, as it had more attack than the Labyrinth tank, and so it was protecting the three monsters behind it. The second bonus rule is, if the attack of the attacking monster is equal to the defense of the defending monster, the defense mode monster is destroyed. This is a weird rule to add, but I think the reason they did this is because in the real world, there's not that many monsters in the game, and probably to stop stalemates happening, they're just like, yeah, sure, it can destroy it. Why not? Flying type monsters cannot move through the maze. I'll admit it, this is a weird ruling to have. In the context of the duel, I think the only reason Parrot and Doc said that Yugi and Joey couldn't use their flying monster was just for dramatic tension. But let's just say that the maze is too low for flying monsters to fly through. Maybe they've got like spikes on the roof or something. I don't know. But flying monsters... They can't go through the maze. So what you have to do instead is leave them in the starting zone and just use them as basically protection if the opponent manages to get out of the maze. Note this rule doesn't just apply to winged beasts by the way. It also applies to any monster that looks like it's capable of flight. For example, it is shown that Black Skull Dragon is not allowed to move through the maze since it's a flying monster. Yugi is able to circumvent this negative by swapping the positions of his Dark Magician who made it all the way through the maze and got out on the other side with his Black Skull Dragon who was at the start of the maze by using a card that switched places with two monsters. Spell and trap cards work like usual and can be activated whenever their criteria are met. The point I'm trying to make with this is you don't set spells and traps on specific squares on the board. Instead, you just set them face down in your back row like you would in a normal duel. If the criteria for one of those spells or traps is met, you can activate them. For example, when Yugi used Mirror Force, he activated it like he would any other time. Power and Dox declared an attack and he destroyed all the attack position monsters. I think some of the confusion with these spells and traps comes from a card that Power and Dox use because they have a specific card that does work on specific zones. This card was called Landmine Spider and that trap would activate if any of the specific squares shown on the card's artwork were stepped on. So most likely this is the card that confusion comes in. So there you go. During a duel, the turn order goes team one, player one, team one, player two, team two, player one, team two, player two. So it's not a back and forth. It'll go Yugi first, Joey second, Para third, Dox fourth, instead of going back and forth. Is this fair? It feels okay. It's fine. The phase order goes draw phase, standby phase, main battle phase, end phase. This again is just like a regular duel. However, the main phase and battle phase are both in the same phase because you move your monsters and battle in the same sort of sequence. And you can also obviously activate your spells and traps at the same time as well. And with that, those are pretty much the rules of Labyrinth Duels. Let me know if there's anything I've missed out or gotten wrong, but yeah.
I hope you all enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time. Bye, everyone.